Jesus, and it is applying it to Jesus in the book of Revelation. Mr. Brown, you simply haven't read your Bible, as always. Your reply. How come God of the Bible has got this evil spirit? What about the superiority of white people? How you have what about Raha Elohim? The king of Babylon fall from heaven? A God who has an evil spirit? Don't you tell like me this is your God? The, the Bible has two services. You need the superstition of translation of all of this. I don't read the translations. I read the Bible. He says, How you have fallen. The word says Raha Elohim. So that's why. That's why. That's why in the basically something to you, and he is that one others. that fell from heaven. Calling me what? The morning star. The one he's that disobeyed God's order in the original, yeah. in the garden of the tree. And, you yeah. and to further connect up. that, <laughs> so Moses had a revelation of Jesus, John 3, yeah, yeah, yeah. 14, 16. As Moses I'm lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man Shut must up. be lifted up, yeah. and that everyone who believes in my soul may have eternal life. Yes. So, wait. In the Garden of Eden, the devil tempted in Adam and Eve to teach me. So the tree of good and of the knowledge of good and evil, and then there was a tree of life. So the serpent in the garden of Eden tempted Adam and Eve to eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge, right? And that's why the angels said, now you have become like us, gods. You know that you were between right and wrong. So in the second coming of that fallen one that you mentioned, the morning star, the bright morning star, who fell from heaven, came to test mankind again. And this time, he did not test you for life. Yeah, but he did not test you for knowledge, of eternal knowledge. No, he tested you of life. And there, and there was, like I said, there was two gardens, there was two trees in the Garden of Eden. And the other tree was the tree of life. So that serpent that was in, in heaven, tempting Adam and Eve, he came to earth to tempt mankind to give you everlasting life. It's the same serpent, like it says on Revelation. Um, sorry, on uh, I'm the passage I just quoted in the Revelation, it says, I am like that a, bright morning star, which is Lucifer, the fallen one. Yeah? Just because you don't understand it, that's your business. But the original oral tradition believed that, which was Gnosticism. You see it as heretics, but that was the original teachings. Until it was written down in 18 something, which you believe partially. Because there is many books missing from it. Tell me. So, so let me let me just address what the brother is saying. So what we've got. Can you just help me? Can you uh, uh, pull up the? Uh, tell me the passage for Exodus with uh, the bronze serpent. So let, let's just address what the uh, Mr. Brown is doing. So Mr. Brown. Let's address the one in Exodus. 16, you know okay. So, let us just address what Mr. Brown is saying. So, 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 in terms of, in, now the troll here wants to debate, but I'm going to debate this troll after I finish with Mr. Brown, and then he's going to run away. Watch what happens. So, Mr. Brown thinks that by simply repeating, oh, the brighter morning star, the brighter morning star, that somehow, by repeating that, he makes the argument. He did not address the fact that Isaiah chapter 14 clearly talks about the king of Babylon. So, what does Mr. Brown do? He comes up with another spurious argument, trying to connect the serpent that is talked about in Genesis, that deceived Adam and Eve, with the serpent that Moses was commanded to make in the book of Exodus, in which God commands them to make a bronze snake so that those who look upon it will be healed because they are being bitten by snakes. These two things are completely different. The bronze snake that Moses was commanded to make in Exodus 
is not in any way connected to the snake in Genesis. Mr. Brown is simply seeing the word snake in one book, seeing the word snake in another book, and then going, well, they must be the same thing. Well, by this logic, every time that the Bible mentions the word king, it must be talking about the same king. And every time it mentions the word chariot, it must be talking about the same chariot. What about Gentile dogs? This kind of logic is completely nonsense. It's completely rubbish. It doesn't work. Furthermore, furthermore, he said that in Isaiah 14, that it talked about the man falling from heaven and that therefore he insisted that these words should be taken literally. I invite Mr. Brown to read the passage again because the passage is clearly using metaphors. Listen to the metaphors. It says that the whole earth is at rest and quiet. They break forth into singing. The cypresses exalt you. The cedars of Lebanon saying since you were laid low. Do you really believe the Bible is inviting you to believe that trees talk? No, it is using metaphors. And it's using metaphors here when it says that the king of Babylon fell like the morning star. Mr. Brown is ignorant of the Bible because he's not reading the Bible. He's simply reading stupid Islamic websites that make silly arguments against Christianity that he never bothers to check for himself. I think I've answered every point. Oh, wait, I want to go back to John 14. No. He quoted John 3, 14 to 16. Let's just look at that. John 14, 30, 40, uh, 13 to 14. What was it? 13 to 14? Or was it 14? 13. John 3. So in John chapter 3, 14 to 16, listen to these words. And just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Jesus is saying that he must be lifted up on the cross in the same way that the bronze serpent was lifted up in the desert and saved the people of Israel from destruction by the serpents, so you must believe in Christ crucified to be saved from death and have he was never eternal life. Now, who can give eternal life but God? So Jesus is saying, Jesus, I am God, if he does not because lie, he, will go he to gives to eternal life. You done, Mr. Brown? When he was born, when I was thinking, eh? nice you are telling people to believe in Jesus. Have you noticed uh, in, in not so much your channel, but JC's channel is, uh, I wouldn't mention that too. Uh, there are a lot of uh, racism and going on in the community yeah, anyone, anyone who makes racist comments in Soko films, 
or on my channel. I want you to be understand that I am not with you. I reject your racist commentary. I reject your racist statements. Christianity teaches that in Christ there is one humanity. That is all. And anyone who makes distinguishment based upon ethnicity, I condemn your opinions as being contrary to Christ, as being anti-Christ, and as being unchristian. I want to give you a gift. Yep, there you go. We had a nice conversation. I'm giving you a personal library, bro. I hope